Oh god, I hear it. I hear things. Alright, cool, cool. See you here. Alright, so, um, basically, I, I choose to work in YUP, which is why I'm doing this process, which you shouldn't have to do if you're working in ZUP, obviously. Um, but you, you, you probably already know. I'm, I'm gonna do the whole thing from scratch, including exporting, just so everything is fresh. So, um,. But as far as as far as far um, what you need to export, I keep it with the SMDs because I know that they could use that to compile. But again, it's all just a guess because I really don't know. Uh, well, as long as you get the SMDs from, as long as you pop the SMDs out, you're going to be fine. Um, that's all you need. But as far as like what Valve needs, I really don't know. It's all just a guess. I, <laughs> it's all it is, really. So I, I don't even know if any of these have any shot of even getting in, but I could try and hope. So, but anyway, once you have the, once you get everything right, once you have your SMD ready to go, um, what you need to do is you go to your. Uh, I'm assuming you have all this already set up because you you done the GC, what is it called, the GCF, or GC yeah GCF scape uh, process to break out all the files, so you have everything like this. Um, and then inside here, you go to the heroes, and I'm going to do this for for uh, Bloodseeker, obviously, you're going to be doing it for Jug. Um, you have the Bloodseeker SMD, or the DX90 right here. So I copy this out, and I move it into a new folder, which is just simply the compiled folder, uh, just to keep things organized, I guess. Then I have, then I'll change, you have to change that to 90, um, which is going to conflict, so I'm just going to delete this one since it's already there. Uh, you change that to 80, you know, the whole studio compiler, I figure, you, you know, again, I'll just, I'm, I'm explaining it because I'm going to use this to build a tutorial out of. <laughs> I'm killing two birds with one stone here. Uh, so, I'm going to edit, I'm probably going to redo the voice, but I'm going to use this to kind of base where everything is. Um, shit. So once you do all this, you know, I just do that. I usually I spit them out into a separate folder here. Uh, I have this broken down a bit more because I'm editing like the weapons as well um, and things like that. So there's a little bit more. Like these could really just be gone. You don't have to worry about them as well as this. Um, so I extract them all to a separate folder here. Obviously, um, of course, it fails to load. Things like that will happen. Because I'm terrible. Let me get it for real this time and not cheat cheated. So many folders. Um so yeah. So yeah, you decompile everything so it spits everything out. There it all is. Just vomits all the files out. Uh it'll pop them all in here. So you can see these have all been updated. Um now I have my own little uh, bat folder or bat thing, which uh, they walk you through. But this is uh, this is important. You'll need this. At least if you're going to do it this way, you'll need this. Um, it's simply just copying this 
uh, make sure you get all you know the spacing and everything, and then saving it as a um, a bat file. Um, if you want, actually, you know what I'll do? I could do this. Um, I could drop this here. I'll drop it right in here. And once that syncs up, here you could download. You could just download that, and then um, and then you don't have to worry about it. Now, how that works? If you don't know, uh, that is going to be your link to your Source SDK bin episode one bin studio MDL compiler essentially. So that the file, so essentially what this bat's going to do is it's going to run this, and then run the f run the QC and all of the compiled files or decompiled files, <coughs> compiling them and then spitting them back into your Dota 2 beta folder. So like once you run this, you don't have to do anything. You could just go right in and test because everything is going to compile for you. Um, so once you redirect this to that folder and you redirect this to your studio MDL exe uh it'll run just fine you'll have a, you'll have your bat file ready to go then where am i now now once you have all that in there you ju I, I usually put that bat i'll just copy it like i have a master one that i just keep copying it and pasting it wherever i you know in the same directory just to keep things a little more simplified um once you have that take your smd and I'm going to show you both ways to do this. I'm going to rename this one. And I hope I didn't just overwrite it. I don't think I did because I changed it. Yeah. So I'm going to rename this one to Bloodseeker. Or I'm going to name this one Stabby. Because that's what it's for. So this is going to be Stabby Idle. Now, this is the alternative. This is the way I actually started doing it. Or I'm going to start doing it, I think. Just because I don't need to change any... I don't need to rename and overwrite any files. I could just go right in. But essentially, if you go in here, you could see, um, you could look at each individual animation, and this is what it looks for. So, like in this, you have the sequence in the in the Bloodseeker um, Bloodseeker Idol, and it's looking for that uh, that SMD in the animation. So, what I'm going to start doing now is rather than basically overwriting this file here, I'm going to just essentially change this to stabby underscore Idol, and now it's going to read this rather than that. So it's gonna when it compiles, it's gonna run this as the idle rather than that. The old, now that's the new way. Um, the safer way to guarantee that everything works without a hitch is rather than doing it that way is to simply just um, to simply copy this, uh, copy the name here, and then overwrite this. So, but but essentially, what you're doing is the same thing because all you're doing again is it's looking for this file now instead of that file. But essentially, what you've done is taking it's the same file with just the name. So it's kind of you know. So either either way, either one of those works. So it's kind of a preference on which one you want to do. If you if you have like if you're going to be pumping in like nine new animations, it might be better to just leave them as se uh, you know separate name just so you don't lose them. Um, but if you're only doing one, then, you know, hey, I don't have a problem with just overwriting a file. It's no big deal. Um, anyway, once once you get that, what you do is you take, you have to go in here, and the other thing you have to do is make sure at the top you see here. First, this right here, you delete. Delete the first line. You don't need it. It's unnecessary. And then the other change that you have to make in order for the compiler to read is to change these. For some reason, it doesn't read. It has to have .smd. It doesn't compile if there's no .smd at the end of these, um, which is mind-boggling. I don't know why it's like that when the animations, it, essentially, the like the way the script runs, it's doing the same thing. It's just, I don't know. But these have to have SMD at the end. These don't, for whatever reason. Um... The other now now this is where things get a bit more hacky because I haven't necessarily I'm kind of working through my own like I'm still figuring it out I still have issues and you're gonna see issues pop up when I run the compiler so now when you're ready to run the compiler and you're ready and you've made all the changes to you know to your your QC and everything looks like it's ready to go you know you made the SMD change you got rid of the first line and it doesn't look like anything else you're ready to basically compile it and the way you do that is simply just take this file and plop it right on that and it's just gonna start running it and as you can see here it went without a hitch I don't have any issues whatsoever and it's going to run all the way through and you'll know it's successful because it's gonna tell you completed MDL compiler and and it just ran through now in order to double check this to make sure that everything worked 
um, when you go back into this previous folder where you extracted, like for example, you're gonna go into like this one, right? In Batrider, I haven't touched touch Batrider. You notice how he's got only the DX90 MDL and VVD. What happens is the new when you recompile it, you're also going to get a DX80. You're gonna get an overwritten DX90. It's gonna overwrite the MDL and the VVD, but you're also gonna get a WS or an SW and an Xbox file. Um, all of that information is absolutely irrelevant. It doesn't matter, but that's how I check to make sure that the compile was successful. So that's how you know that there was a change made. Now, in order to now now to test these, right? You need to make sure that Dota bypasses the system, which is this is obvious. This is like old school getting items to work. Simply just going in here and hiding this by changing the name, so it can't find that file. And then all you do is run Dota, and that should. That should so that should be it. So I'm gonna run this, and I I hope I think I actually did everything right. I hope I overwrote the file. I don't remember if I did, so this might actually I might have to go back and just do it again real quick. But if I I believe I did, so the animation should be in there. If it's not, I'm not. I, it's just a I, a little whoops moment. So but let's see. Oh, and, and also I don't know if you've ever run Dota like that. But um, just be prepared for excessively long load times. Um, just happens. And also, there's a weird graphical bug. I don't. I'm just curious if this happens. If you do this and it works, it loads, and then right in this corner where my mouse is, there's going to be like a little box where like the map comes through. It's like a little window. I'm just wondering if that's like. I wonder if that's something just with this process. And I just find it funny though that happens there. I don't know why. I find funny stuff in stupid shit. Oh no, I broke Dota. Alright. I see this other window I'm talking about. Just comes in, it's like, hello. Alright, here we go. Well, good afternoon there. Pick any of these fellas. So, yep. Now, now the for some reason, like, and again, this is some of the issues that I'm having. This gets bugged. The the loadout for some reason gets bugged, and it just starts playing weird animations. I get another bug where um, the idle alt all of a sudden flips them on the Y where Y up instead of Z up. So there's some weird issues that I'm still facing. But the important thing is that the animation is and I don't. What is this? Oh, better get ready. But the important thing is that the animation works. And that that's how you, you know. I mean, it's not perfect, but in that some of there's some issues like this, and this is why I I am not changing the skinning anymore because the reason it's like that is because I went in and actually changed the skinning here, so that these don't represent the proper you know it's not proper to what's actually going on in the game, and that's why I need to not edit the skinning ever, even though the skinning is fucked on some of these rigs. But the thing is, the, the, the important thing is, um, it's that all the bone data is being read you right now. Be honored to bleed. So even though you get, ones may live. so like issues like that I need to fix. 30 seconds to go. I'm gonna have to ask you guys to just stop talking, because that is just so loud. Alright, anyway, um, but yeah, so I mean there's still some issues I'm working out. It's not, the process isn't perfect by any means, uh, but I, the one thing I do know without you know, without a shed of doubt, is that all of the animations are working with the bones, like the bones are all where they're supposed to be in order for the animation to work, it's just the compiling process seems to be having some errors, getting, you know, recompiling, decompiled data, it seems to just be causing some issues, but I know that the bone data is still correct, so it's like, you know, it's not perfect, but it's getting there, essentially, so... So that's yeah. Once yeah, here. Once I once all that's done and I'm happy with the you know happy with what I got, I'll simply just go right into this folder here. I'll take the stabby animation idle and I'd keep it as the name that I, I choose, so I wouldn't use the overwritten name just to avoid complications. And all I'd simply do is essentially make a new zip and throw and throw this just the SMD. 
Although, what I have started also doing, and I recommend you doing the same, is also pop out the animation as an FBX and include that. Even though you can't test the FBX, the data should still be right, meaning that they could also test with an FBX if they have some sort of pipeline that they're working on, That I mean, I, just hypothetically speaking. Plus, I mean, you know, popping out an FBX takes all of, like, you know, three seconds, so it's not... I, I would recommend popping out an FBX as well, just because, you know, just because it's a little safer. So, but yeah, that's, like, for, for the Bristleback thing and for the Tusk stuff, all I sent them were SMDs and FBX files, because there's nothing else... I, I mean, what I mean, I I, I I considered sending them the entire compiled hero, but I figured, like, what's the point? I mean, they... They could they could easily run all this stuff at the same time. So just I think the SMDs and the FBXs are you know suffice. Uh, I don't think you have to go any more than that. So for your juggernaut, yeah, just submit just submit SMDs and FBX and hopefully I mean again, this could all be for nothing. I mean for all I know. But see the thing is they they they're accepting but they're accepting animations. You have Vidato doing animations and they're getting accepted. So the the tools are there, and I know that they could implement them. It's just that there's no. There's no official importer for it yet, so everything is like the hacky, the hacky way. You know, the, it's almost like we're back to the the animations in Dota are now back to the wild, wild west days of when the when you know the workshop first started. So like everyone's hacking these things in just like they did with items way back in the day. So it's like you know the tools will hopefully be there and in, in time, but for now we have to go with the hacky method, which is fun and annoying, and has lots of errors. So so hopefully that gives you the insight and you know and it, and this is also going to record as a VOD too so you could go back and 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 watch this again um and I'm also going to be taking this and doing more more proper voiceovers and not such like uh nonsense now I'm going to edit this a little bit better for the official version so so this is good um so yeah so with that being said I'm going to go and devour this potato and beans that have been staring at me for the last 20 minutes because I'm starving, so uh, I can't wait to see. If you want, by the way, if you want me to take a look at the animations, I'd be more than happy to look. Like I, I'm actually, I can't wait to see to see what you've come up with. So I'm, I'm I love seeing custom animations, so I'm more than happy to take a look. Um, so yeah, I want to see, I want to see a revolution in the workshop on the animation front, and just everyone, you know, I want to see like animations for every item, and just to throw all the, you know, throw everything we knew out the window, but. You know, but all right. Well, with that being said, I wish you the best of luck. I can't wait to see these animations, and uh, and I am going to run away now and and eat some well, no, rather bury my face in this bowl of beans and potatoes. So, yeah. all right, man. I'll talk to you later. Have fun.